Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. John 4, 23, 24 says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the worship, worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Saints and people of God, let us come together with one mind, one accord this evening and open our all and worship to our soon coming King Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Be a living sacrifice and experience God's transforming power in you tonight. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. By your word you create, and by your breath you give life. We worship you with joy and thanksgiving, praising you for the fullness that your presence brings to our lives and our lives together. We praise you that by your word you feed us. We are satisfied, and there is always more. Your goodness is displayed in your wonderful works for our humanity and in your perfect love. Tomato metua eteaura, kia tapu to ingoa, kia tae to opasileia, kia akono ia to anuano ite enua nei. Aka kore mai koe tamato ara, ete mana, ete kaka, etuata uatu. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Greetings to each and every one of us gathered here today. To those of us on live stream, listening in and watching our live stream this evening, kia orana, and greetings in the wonderful and saving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus' blessings to each one of you and love from our diocesan bishop to Taipere, Mama Patricia and Pere, and our apostolic church here on the island of Rarotonga. Ki aga metaki hia tia tua, no tia tikanga mania, ki arawe tatu, ki a riro tia tua, e tura mai to oto ora orang, ko ia naki, te matara, e te tua tua mo, e te ora. Be blessed with our live stream, our worship this evening, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, saints. It's testimony time. Come up and testify the goodness of the Lord. But first, if I may ask the praise team to start us with a song. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm here to say thank you to God for looking after me today, waking me up for a beautiful day. Thank you, God, for looking after me the whole week in my house, in my body, and in my work, and at home. I thank Jesus for everything he has given me. I can, now I can live on a dollar a day. What a blessing. Thank you, Jesus, in my work. I pray and thank God for last Sunday, my sermon. He was there helping me. And now I can do what I can do in my sermon. I thank God for enlightening me, enriching my thinking. Um, I never thought like this before, but now I can do it. Um, and, uh, and come out for Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, finally, I had a good day today with uh, our Samoan um, team. And um, that's when I learned that in all our home group, we were praying for the people that we know. Because I was telling them I was doing well in my work, I was doing well in my studies. I struggled, I cried, but I know, now I know there was people praying for me at that time. 
I pray God and thank God for everything. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I honor the Lord for He is a good God to me. I thank the Lord for this week, uh, His blessings for me this week. Uh, he's been working through our team at Air New Zealand. I know now I'm sending the daily bread uh, you guys receive on Don't Miss Out. I'm sending it on our uh, page and I see the, the movement of God helping our, uh, our staff at Air New Zealand. Now we are starting to listen to um, uh, worship songs at our place of work. <laughs> so I know that's God moving. I didn't tell them to put on worship songs, but somehow they have their own worship songs they, they listen to. So I thank the Lord for that and the encouragement from our daily bread. So God is doing mighty good because um, now we are in, uh, how do you say, we have a service. After we finish work, we have to do our prayer. So thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you for his many blessings in my life. I'm many. Praise the Lord, saints. God is good. And all the time. I'm many. I, I truly honor the Lord at this time for he's the head of my life. I thank God and praise the Lord for our pastor and our mama. I thank God and praise the Lord for my husband, who's the head of our home, but also the head of our home group. I praise the Lord for all of my little home group, I'm Peter and... They're all our family in Matavera. I praise the Lord too. I, my blessings is um, I praise the Lord for the opportunity that we are able to combine together as Takitumo on Thursday evenings. I was really blessed with our, um, our home group at um, Papa Uncle John and Auntie Kopu's place on um, Thursday with the joy that we all had. It was raining, it was pouring, but who cares? Let the rain pour down and, and let our praises rain upwards. Praise the Lord. So I praise the Lord for that, for that um, good, the good time I enjoy to, to meet our um, like I meet our deacons our, our elders, our, our mitua praise the Lord and the time that we can share together. I praise the Lord too for the opportunity for our Zoom um, a platform that we have every other night, um, every other non-church night um, in order to encourage our children overseas but for me, as a training ground for our, our, our little kids to start learning their um, memory verses and also to testify, to get them over that shyness and to get them to um, be able to testify. I praise the Lord for our twins. Um, first of all, they said to me, yes, we're going to go testify. And then tonight, oh, no, no, no. Too, they look around, oh, no, 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 no. Only at the home group. And I said, oh, like this thing. But anyway, that's okay. There's still, there's still room. There's still opportunities for them to come. I thank the Lord for my place of work. Yes, out of Johnny, I, I love that, that that's what you do. Because now, every time we, um, we get together, it seems we have to open in a puri, or we have to open in some karakia. And usually with the Maori, the karakia, you hear them um, giving honor to the Lord. But um, I praise the Lord that that is an attitude in our place of work, because I also have Kapiri, who also lead, um, when we do things, she also leads in prayer. So I praise the Lord that um, that is a culture that is um, uh, developing in our place of work. I didn't develop it, okay? I didn't, um, put, but they see us every time. We, we always say, hey, say grace. And they don't say grace. You know, people don't say grace when they have their, what we do, right? Eh? And then we always open every meeting with a, with a pure. And now it's a common thing when we have a function to have a pure. So I praise the Lord for Bishop and Mama for coming to the, um, to the, um, the uh, Waitangi function at Ngāti Pā when Minister, uh, our Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand, who's also the Minister of Foreign Affairs um, and Trade, whom I work for, um, was there. I praise the Lord for that. I praise the Lord for what Bishop had to say. And even though that um, um, Winston Peters took out of it, and, um, because he, he does that with his speeches, if those of us who don't know and don't know, don't listen. But I praise the Lord because people did talk about it that, uh, that evening and they've spoken about it. I praise the Lord. Um, the opportunities and challenges that come my way, but my, like I said, on eagle's wings, and I can renew my strength. I'm weary. A lot of days I'm weary at the end of my long day. My day starts at five o'clock in the morning, and it ends at, at whatever time it is that I go to bed, sometimes after midnight, and it starts again at, sorry, at four, four o'clock in the morning. But I praise the Lord for the strength God gives me. I praise the Lord that I, He is my God. I especially praise the Lord for... Um, it's always uh, with the lessons that we've had these last couple of weeks, but especially with Daniel, the focus has always been on the lion's den. But you know, it was so beautiful to be able to see that that king who didn't believe in the God of Daniel prayed to the God of Daniel, praise the Lord, to shut the lion's mouth. And like Akitumu said, 
Let God shut the mouth of the lions. My job is to stand of the banner of um, faith and and, Jesus, and that the, word, um, the life in Jesus be found. So I want to say I love the Lord. I love you, church. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I thank the Lord. He's been looking after me and my family. I thank the Lord that I'm church today. I thank the Lord that my cousins and my auntie are here. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I thank the Lord for thank the Lord for everything He has done for my family, and I thank the Lord that my favorite auntie is here in church. She's at the back over there. <laughs> And I thank the Lord that my cousins are here too. And I thank the Lord that for my second year of college. And I thank the Lord for everything I'm in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. The Bible says God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord. Amen. But I want to thank God and praise the Lord because uh, uh, I'm the only one that lives down the beach. All of you guys live inland. So I've said to my home group, everybody lives inland. Oh, this is the Lord, this must be a real test of my faith. You put me there for a reason. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord. Every, every week, I remember the one, uh, I look at the dogs because like the bishop at one time uh, says that, uh, and you know that there is danger coming because otherwise the animals, uh, they won't run away because there's no danger. So I keep looking at my dogs every day. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord. And it, the word of the Lord encourages me to put my trust in him. Amen. Because, um, but I want to thank God and praise the Lord. I'm not alone. I'm with the creator. Amen. Who created the seas, you name it, everything that exists in this world. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord. No tea, um, um, like Aniru was saying before, but I'm going to to you. He's the creator. He created the lion. Praise the Lord. In Daniel's den, he created the lion. I want to thank God and praise the Lord. He is a God that I trust. And I want to thank God and praise the Lord. Um, not the, uh, ah, and how many times did he, uh, how many other hurricanes got out of my, but the thing is, we have a God that we truly and truly praise and put our trust in. So I truly want to thank God for that. I want to thank God and praise the Lord also for the small home group of uh, Mark. Um, I want to thank God and praise the Lord for our dear mom. He's still alive. Uh, it's the beginning of the year now, February. In November, she will gain another year. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord and praise the, uh, pray that the Lord will keep her and keep her to the end, uh, to her next birthday. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord. But then let the Lord have his own way. Amen. Let it be according to the, to the Lord's will. And I want to thank God and praise the Lord for my uh, two sisters, mainly for one sister, Abby, that, uh, and our caretaker that looks after our mom every day from Monday to Saturday. And also I want to thank God and praise the Lord for also for my sister Poco for being there the poor me, me, when mom is asleep, then she wakes up and she looks after mom while mom is asleep. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord. He has his own way. I thank God and praise the Lord for give them, giving them all the strength to take care of uh, our mom. Um, in that age, she's still walking. She's not bedridden. That is the one thing that I thank God and praise the Lord for. Most people I know, there's a lot that I know in their 80s, and some earlier has been bedridden at that age. And, uh, but I want to thank God and praise the Lord. My mom's uh, going on to 92, and she's still walking. Uh, you will lead her, but she's still walking. She has, she's not bedridden. And I want to thank God and praise the Lord for his grace, his mercy, and his love and protection upon her. I also want to thank God and praise the Lord for all my sisters overseas, those that are in the faith, those that are out of the faith. And uh, we are praying that uh, in due time, they will come back into the faith where they started off in the first place. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord because he is an awesome God. I thank God and praise the Lord also for 
the arbor orchard, my uh, roofing guys at work, they're the guys that takes care of the orchard, and they're panicking. And the Filipino guy, our Filipino worker said, oh, it's very windy though. The mango, oh, John, so how many mangoes on the, on the floor, on the ground, the last time there was a strong wind? Oh, 10, 10, I thought it's 100. He said, 10, I said, he said, I do pray. I said, there you go. You know who to pray to? Yes. I said, okay. Say your prayer every day. And ask the Lord to protect the, the uh, orchard. So I want to thank God and praise for the last one that they had. He was panicking. And he told uh, Bobby. So Bobby asked, how many mangoes on the ground, John? Be honest. Oh, 30. And Bobby said, 30? I thought it was 300. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord for his protection. Amen. <laughs> The wind was really strong, but it did not damage the, the orchard. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord because of the God that we all trust and believe in. So I want to thank God and praise the Lord because his name alone is awesome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. I give honor and praise to God for his head in my life. I want to God also for our pastor, Bishop Peter, and also the mother of the church, first family. I most especially give honor to God for God indeed is good to me. I praise the Lord for my wife, for my children, and for my grandchildren. I thank God for everything that he's done uh, in our lives. <coughs> I praise the Lord uh, also uh, during the night of the uh, high winds that we had, and my wife was pondering upon what's going on. How is it? I'm not sure whether she's walking around in the house. Uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe um, she, uh, she's on an intercessory. Uh, session through our home but in my room I am fast asleep what can I do what can I say to God to actually make him change what's happening around me I just said well I'll wait for the morning and see what happens and then I'm going to attend to it so I praise the Lord that that God has been so good to me in my walk I praise the Lord for uh, the um, the things that I get involved with um, uh, just the other day um, on a, on Wednesday night we have a farmer's meet uh, Papa Kriya was able to do this for us and, and it was actually quite interesting because last year, <laughs> uh, this Papa, I, uh, I had not seen him in his plantation for over a month. And um, we don't get on. Uh, you know. <laughs> but one day I would come from um, uh, home uh, down to my plantation. Papa, <laughs> Papa. I didn't meet me at the And he didn't he didn't answer me, you know, he, he didn't even get angry with me. And and I said to him, um, I asked him, why why don't you leave us your knowledge? I said, because if you're gonna take it to the maggot, they're not gonna appreciate it. But if you're gonna leave it for us, I said, you will create an opportunity now for the next generation of farmers. <coughs> You know, um, it's, it's just, he didn't answer me. So, so maybe I thought, well, but a few weeks later, he would actually stop and tell me, oh, he's made up his mind. I said, eh, what, 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 what do you mean? He said, oh, I'm going to, you know, make a, a get together for us. I need to give all this knowledge to the farmers. I said, praise the Lord, Papa. You are the first of all the farmers in this nation of ours. To actually have that thought. And I thank God for he is good to you. Uh, you know, for uh, allowing us to have that. And I, uh, and to have this um, farmer's meet on um, Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. If you don't have a ticket, go and buy one. Okay, because I, I'm telling you, this is the first of this kind. And you know, out of our meeting, I told Papa, I want to write a story about you, Papa. He looked at me as if it's a joke, you know, if you have heard him laugh, you, you, you will actually laugh at the way he laughs. You know? and, and so he just looked at me, but then I went and got my book. Before he left, I said, this is what I have done. And, and uh, the title of the book actually appealed to him. And he said, oh, interesting. I, I, oh, this is something I have not uh, read. And, um, and he asked me, what's the story about? I said, about my pastor. <laughs> And he said, oh, okay, okay, too tight. Yeah, I'll go and read it. So in saying that to him, I told him I'll write a story about him. And today I've written the introduction of the story that I want to put together for this man. And um, I, find, I find myself wanting to do that uh, right now. Uh, and I always tell my wife, you know, in my head, I, I need to do something uh, abnormal in order to stop my mind thinking because every minute I get up, this thing is like ticking in my head. 
And even in my plantation, I have to go home and write something down. But I praise the Lord for what God has given me. And, and, and in this uh, phase of my life, I, I, truly, I truly thank God for, for He has not waited until I'm actually gone that He's able to uh, give me uh, another chance at, at what He had already blessed me with. So that's my greatest blessing this year. And that's my greatest blessing right now in, in all that I do. So I will forever thank God for His goodness. I thank God for His love. And uh, what, a lot of things that I've come to understand now is... Um, uh, like I said, uh, how I present the word gives you a question to ask in terms of where you are in terms of your faith. Uh, and so that's, that's where I stand. And I really thank God, uh, like I'm saying, okay, and I thank the Lord for my wife, for the patient, okay, because, um, yeah, I, I always tell her, I thank the Lord for the Spirit of God in me. Because without that Spirit, I know where that I will be like a storm in everything that I do, just like Papa Junior would, would talk about. Uh, so, so that's the storm that I go through too. So I just want to say to you all, uh, God has been good, God is merciful, and I love you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I thank the Lord for being good to me. Thank Him for His protection. Thank Him for His blood. Thank Him for His sound mind. Thank Him for His strength. Thank Him for His wisdom. Jesus is nothing like you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank Jesus. I've got so many things to thank my God. I want to thank you, Jesus, that I'm still alive today. I want to thank you, Jesus, for looking after me and my husband at home. I want to thank you, Jesus, for, for his traveling mercies. I want to thank you, Jesus, for, for people that are paying my fare. I to thank you, I want to thank you, Jesus, for that blessing. I want to thank you, Jesus, for looking after our children in New Zealand. They're doing well. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for the time that Auntie Tina is right there with them teaching at the Sunday school and other things. I want to thank you, Jesus. That's a blessing. I want to thank you, Jesus, for our Takutumu Home Group uh, on Thursday, which is held in the house, and a blessing, and I always want it. I've always wanted all these years for the prayer meeting to come to my house. I want to thank you, Jesus, uh, for the blessing of having the prayer meeting in the home. I want to thank you, Jesus, for, for our missionaries, our missionaries today. We have time to invite them to come. Saints. But it's not the food that is important. It's the fellowship. It's telling them we love you. I want to thank you, Jesus, for that opportunity. I want to thank God for Sister Tasi. When I look back, the six years before that, uh, me and my sister were in Tuta, I can, I can testify that when we come to the cleaning, that's the first place we run. We run to the toilet. Hey, Angie. That's the first place we go. Me and Angie, would, when the two, they always rush to the toilet first. I want to thank you, Jesus, for six years. But on Saturday, I want to thank you, Jesus. Tati, thank you for cleaning the toilet for us. I want to thank you, Jesus, for our brother, Fayu. Fayu, thank you for the prayer. Because when Fayu was the elder for the child, every church night, I mentioned or I find you thing or John Tumutok Tetua. Find you, thank you, brother, for praying for my husband. I want to thank you, Jesus, for the dancing king. When Fafoy first came to church, I love his dancing. I want to thank you, Jesus, for knowing these kids. I want to thank you, Jesus, for everything. Saints, I want to thank you, Jesus, for the prayers of today. I felt the anointing. Thank you for that beautiful. And the rest, and the rest of the prayer this morning, I want to thank you, Jesus, for those who pray. I want to thank you, Jesus, on uh, Saturday. I picked a tourist on the road. I took them, end up there are teachers for the Hukio school. When, when, when I stopped, they asked me, where, uh, tomorrow is Sunday, uh, which church do you go? I said to the mama, I go to, to the church where Jesus is highly exalted. That's my church, Apostolic Church on Aitutaki. I would love to invite you two to my church. But they said, we'd love to come to your church, but somebody already offered, they're going to pick us up. So maybe next time. I'll go back and bring, because they heard that we are the, we, we are the church that we, when Jesus is highly exalted. I want to thank you, Jesus, for my visitors. And I'm more money I rang. 
Who are you going to your church? Come home, we'll have lunch. Auntie, we can't go to church. I didn't bring any clothes. You know, the moment he didn't bring. I said, okay, Jesus wants you to come to church anyhow. Bring what you brought from New Zealand, come to church. So they end up coming to church. I want to thank you, Jesus, for having my nephew Jimmy at church. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for salvation in his name. I want to thank you, Jesus, for the teaching of in our church. I want to thank you, Jesus. Saints. Every time I go to New Zealand, the first person I see is the Tamariki. I sit that person, I tell them about Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, Church. Again, it's good to be in the presence of the Lord tonight. I just want to thank God for His goodness. Thank Him for being the head of my life, the head of my children and my husband's life. He's been a good God to me. I just appreciate him for all he has done for me. Because without him, where would I be today? He is so precious in my life. And because of him, I am here today. And because of him, I live today. Because of him, I am a miracle today. A miracle that has been baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost. And yes, all the years, I have my struggles. I have my time, my moments that I just want to back off. But what kept me going was faith. Amen. Was faith that kept me going, was the fellowship with one another and our family in New Zealand when I was in the UPC. And coming over here to attend the, the Apostolic Church, that really um, helped me in my walk, in my walk again with, uh, with, with the Lord. And to attend the home group, not only once a week, but twice a week. Amen. But that really boosts my... my um, spirit up. So I just want to thank God for the teachings that we have every night and the Sunday school lessons and even attending our combined service. I enjoy going to those. <laughs> I enjoy traveling, going <laughs> to those places. It's good. <laughs> and I enjoyed our home base, home group too. I just want to thank the Lord. I just thank the Lord for you, Bishop and Mama, for giving me this time, you know, and to come to know the people in this house. And to come to know each one of you, so I just want to say I love you all and I love the Lord. Praise Him. Just like to just uh, uh, thank God once again for our beautiful service today from the start right through to the end. And a uh, uh, special uh, thank you, yeah. Brother Julia Adai, not out of Pure Manea, though in Maori. Like I've always said, you, you pray what you are comfortable. You preach what you're comfortable in. And don't, uh, hallelujah, uh, drag yourself if you can speak English. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you can bring out of your mouth, uh, uh, the Lord will uh, start on that uh, for the progress. So thank you all. And even tonight, appreciate the Lord for Nave leading and Peter. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm trying to, to see how to, to reverse anything disastrous, anything negative, anything uh, uh, unappealing. Hallelujah. Like the uh, Daniel in the lion's den. So in a very negative way, it's scary, it's cruelty, it's brutal, but it turned out to be a, a world turned over for the king. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, like the word of God says, pray without ceasing and rejoice evermore. In everything, give thanks. Everything, give thanks. Everything works together for good to them that love the Lord. Hallelujah. So the api a kino. Hallelujah. So don't just uh, dwell on a one-way street all the time. Then we can bear. Yeah. Hallelujah. you capitalize on the strength of your opponent. Hallelujah. You capitalize. So it's with everything negative, whether it's a uri ear or whatever. Hallelujah. Uh, 
Uh, there was a very tall coconut tree in the back. I was always uh, mindful of the neighbor. When it falls, it might reach my fence. And uh, thank God we had time to cut it down one time uh, with some men who went through our villages uh, cutting down trees. But the big tubu oh, been there. Uh, tribute to to put my tribute to to put my raw 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 kino, ah yeah, hallelujah. Uh, lo and behold, after the uh, the storm, I I did my general clean up right through from the road to the back, and uh, lo and behold, hate o mar ma o amuri kare pu o ho. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for the storm. Hallelujah. Ah, para ro ro ikira ro. Te wai mai ra ro apo po ga ne ga chipu pu er te ro ina ro wai. Welcome. It's free. Bring your truck. Load with the aga tubo. But uh, uh, the biggest miracle was, hallelujah, after the storm, I picked up a popo, one of our favorite popo, right at the front. Uh, it's an export popo. Uh, very round and thick. So uh, Mama and I have been eating that popo. But uh, after the storm, that was a popo. I picked it and took it in, and uh, hallelujah. Mama took it and uh, cut it up, put it for breakfast a couple of days later. Hallelujah. And I was shocked, and I said, Mama, is that the popo sitting up here that I put it? She said, yes. Are you sure? Uh, uh, the round, big one. Yes, there was a little uh, tona on it, a saw on it. I uh, cut it off and leave it there. I say, can't be. Hallelujah. And then she was startled. I said, that was uh, a, a yellow. Yellow popo, how come it turned red? It turned red. I took a photo of it. Hallelujah. I was going to post to the world. Hallelujah. That the storm turned my popo to red because I loved the Vitarona. Turn red overnight. <laughs> Thank you. Whether you believe it or not, but King Nebuchadnezzar believed Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Honor God for being such a wonderful God. Thank God for our beautiful service today. Thank the Lord for our soul that went down in Jesus' name today. Thank the Lord for our beautiful service. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord, the birthday giver, for giving me an, an extra year. Hallelujah. He's such a wonderful God. I want to thank him for being so good. I want to thank him for my dear husband taking good care of me and treating me uh, very well uh, for... Uh, Valentine's and my birthday. Wow, I got a double blessing this year. Hallelujah. Uh, carry on. <laughs> so I want to thank the Lord for being good. I want to thank the Lord for everything that he does for us. I thank him for his word. I thank him for the power of prayer. Hallelujah. I thank him just for being such a wonderful God, giving us grace and strength every day to do what we need to do to be ready when he comes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I want to thank the Lord for all your beautiful testimonies. I am truly blessed. Hopefully you all are. Um, my blessing today is when I was just standing there, I turned around. My cousin was in the house of the Lord. She's not here by mistake. She's here because the Lord brought her here. This is the twins, mom. I don't know if you guys remember the twins, the boys, Jesse and Peter. This is their mom, and she is in the house of the Lord. That's my blessing today. Amen and hallelujah. Proverbs 3, 19 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy purses shall burst out with new wine. Saints, this tithes and offerings time. Come and give to the Lord. Send it all down. Send it all down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it all down. Send it all down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it all down. Send it all down. Send it all down. Send it all down.
Lord Jesus, we present to you blessings of offerings that belongs to you. Please bless the offerings that is acceptable to you, Lord. Lord, bless the house that gave and continue to supply all our needs. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Loving God, as we express our gratitude to you in prayer, Hallelujah. may it be a pleasing, joyful sound to you. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank it brings you, us Jesus. acceptance and significance. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. It brings us guidance and direction. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. It brings us help and comfort. Thank you, Lord, for your th faithfulness. It brings us stability and strength. Thank you, Lord, for your beauty displayed in the earth. It brings us joy for your way of redemption the cross, it brings us salvation and regeneration. Dear God, we come to you to uphold for our nation, to know more about you, who died for the sins of the world. Lord Jesus, we uphold our Pa Inwa and Rarotonga during this time of cyclone. May your covering blood upon us all in the name of Jesus. We pray for the leaders of the government. Lead them with the wisdom, understanding and knowledge to make a right choice for our country. Lord, we uphold our bishop and mama and all our saints, our families and our loved ones. Bless us all with a good health and watch over us wherever we go. In the name of Jesus. Lord, this is our prayer. We love you and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, Tato. It's church notices time now. Hallelujah. Firstly, this is um, the notices to prepare us for next week. Amen. Firstly, home group to clean our church next Saturday uh, will be Waka uh, We're going through the three groups that the uh, bishop has mentioned before. Waka apostles James, Matthew, and Mark home groups. Please, Tato, 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 Tato. Um, number two, the group to decorate the church with the flowers next Saturday will be Apostle Peter Home Group. So far, these are the notices. So check our church loop for any update from our um, Elder Api or our dear Bishop. Thank you, Jesus. To you be the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. What I would just like to especially make a special mention and thanksgiving to our Almighty God, how true His Word is uh, that we can turn the world upside down. Hallelujah. Uh, that's what the 12 disciples did. Hallelujah. The apostles of Jesus just traveled them, turned the world upside down. So can the church of God by the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost. Just listening to the testimonies of our children from Samoa, how they didn't have no English, how didn't have they didn't this and, and that. But uh, after having uh, walked with Jesus and uh, uh, trained with Jesus and taught uh, by Jesus, uh, lo and behold, hallelujah, they were just speaking all in English up here. Hallelujah. They even know the, uh, the German no name of a, a bottle that I... It, you know, hallelujah. even know that name. Hallelujah. It's not a Samuel Google name. Thank you, Jesus. It's a marvel. It's just a marvel. Yeah, uh, I went home just thinking about it. Lo, uh, what a great testimony that was this morning to, to the whole world. That's what the, uh, the, the truth uh, will do, set us all free, like uh, uh, Kopu was saying earlier on. Hallelujah. That's what the world need to see in us, to hear from us. Hallelujah, uh, how true the, uh, uh, the power of our almighty God, Jesus. Nothing is ever impossible in his name. Hallelujah. So before we call up our, our, our teacher for our Sunday school lesson, hallelujah, and the preachers to come along at the same time so we can uh, just uh, cruise along, uh, praise team, uh, lead us with another uh, kick-up song. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. To my... Forever he shall 
together call up to the pulpit out there elder andrew to bring our new lesson for the coming week put our hands together please Amen. praise the lord <clears throat> praise the lord everybody our lesson faith in god's purpose uh, habakkuk um, 2 verse 5 1 to verse 5 and it says I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lies, though it tarry. 
wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yeah, also because his transgresses by wine, he is the proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Praise the Lord. The ability to know the reason for why something happens, the reason for why things are created and exist, this is purpose. Now, our theme says, faith in God's purpose. This is not a known prophet, but he had a, mes he had a message nonetheless, praise the Lord. He is the eighth of the 12 minor prophets, and uh, their message is not... It's not lesser than the major prophets, but their message is actually interwoven into the timeline of the major prophets. They're the ones who actually predicted uh, a lot in terms of the Messiah. And, uh, they gave us a lot more of that. All right? So, so they're not knowing, but he has something to say. Okay? It's like each of us. We are not widely known by the community outside our comfort zone. And, uh, we are known here in our home group, and, but outside that, nobody really knows much about you. Habakkuk is not obscure, okay, from the wickedness of the nation and most of all, the leaders of the nation. He can see what is happening and in his concern, he calls unto his God. Why do you allow, okay, this to happen? Okay, why do you not bring judgment upon the nation? Okay, why is she allowing the evil to continue? Now, honest questions, real issues, and challenging and during challenging times. When we question God, know you have the opportunity to stand and offer a solution for the situation. Habakkuk knows what's happening, but he is quiet about how they can, okay, help themselves out of the situation. See, to interpret that, we pray for our leaders. We know what is happening in our country, in our nation. We continually pray for them, and we ask God to give them wisdom. We ask God to give them knowledge, and we ask God to give them direction. All right. Just like... What Habakkuk saw, all right? One thing we are failing in is that actually fulfilling our purpose. See, as a prophet, his job was never to question God. Why is this not happening? Why is that happening? His job is to deliver God's message. Praise the Lord. Jesus told his disciples, go ye therefore. And what? Teach, preach. Okay, and do all that I've told you. Amen? But we sit in our obscurity and we pray in our comfort zone. What we need to be doing is what Elder Johnny is saying. We have the ears of the leaders of our nation. Something that I said at our council when I refer to the prime minister of this country in terms of writing a story about our bishop. He is on the throne because his ear is tuned to the man of God, right? That is truth. I'm not saying there is no corruption, there is no evil, there is no wickedness, but I'm saying because his ears are tuned into the man of God, God can stay those things. We each have our voices in order to put, okay, our words in the ears of the leaders of this nation. But we are not doing that. And so we are telling God, why are you quieted about this? 
Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch and sit me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what will say, what I will say unto me, what thou will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Uh, for us, God does not have a reason for actually uh, telling us off if we are doing his business. Amen? Which we have actually said we will do it. Praise the Lord. So when the blood is, is um, actually called for, then we are guilty. Amen? We are guilty. Because we are praying, but we are not doing. We are sitting in comfort and we're not challenging. Amen? We are receiving, but we are not impacting. Praise the Lord. We are receiving, but we are never delivering. So this, this lesson, that's why I said the ability to know the reason for why something happens. All right, that is purpose. And this is where we stand. So if your relationship to your member of parliament is good, then it is your job to speak to him. If you have a speaking relationship with your member of parliament, it is your job to go and minister to him. I am sorry, but that is our calling. Because I would know this when I said it on the night of our council about who our bishop is. You have read the story. That's what they needed to reveal. God is merciful. See, in God's talking to Habakkuk, he is telling him, I am preparing an enemy against my own people. He is preparing the Chaldeans to come in and destroy his children. The problem with that is the enemy has no respect. Whereas if God rebukes you, he has mercy. Because he owns mercy. So in his rebuke, his left hand is also picking you up. Amen. He is rebuking you with his right hand, but his left hand is holding you up. Keeping you out. Keeping you above what you should actually be drowning in. That is the mercy of our God. How do we, during the season of tearing, transform the hearts of the people? Because remember, God tells him, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, it will tarry, it will wait. Our job is during the waiting period, during the tarrying time, we are meant to be out there impressing upon the leaders of this nation. This is what God requires of you. This is what God is demanding of you. For you have that, okay, title upon you, not for the comfort that needs to be created, but for you to realize God has chosen you for this time. The nation needs you to respond to who God is. Tearing transforms the heart of the people. How do we take God's message of devastation to the people drowning, okay, in the, um, drowning in the ocean of wickedness? We address the leaders. Yeah. We don't just pray for the leaders. We put our words in their ears. We stand up and we tell them, this is the waiting period for what shall come. God is going to bring the destruction. God is going to bring the destroyer. <coughs> we take what we have received and we pour out before them. And we do our best to make them accept it. They will not accept everything that we say. But as long as we do our best to tell, give them the message. Praise the Lord. Because the time will come when God will fulfill his words. Without a lie. Okay. But for the time we have, we have an opportunity to stay the hand of judgment. When the hand of judgment falls, when the sword of the angel drops, then there is a great sacrifice that is required. We in this church have the ears of the leaders of the nation. 
like I said, just like um, what Elder Johnny is talking about and what my wife would be talking about in their workplace, we have the opportunity to do this because coronavirus has actually changed the world, has changed the hearts of the people. Uh, we have new sayings like be kind, okay, have patience, okay, you know, we, we have these new words. So <clears throat> with those new words, we have a new love to actually know God. Uh, but ears are closed. So we, the church, okay, have the ears of the leaders, just like the bishop. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> like Habakkuk, God has given each of us purpose. The ability to know why something happens and the uh, faith to trust why God has called you into his marvelous light. Now, why God has called us into his light, even though there is great chaos outside there, but we see everything through the light of God. You are to shine and be a beacon of hope. Judah has fallen into so much evil that the Chaldeans was going, is coming to destroy them. Okay? This is the enemy whom God has raised up. God has raised up an enemy to come and destroy his own children. Amen? Look at that. Look, look, look what God would do against his people whom he had called, against his people whom he has blessed. So what makes us any difference? Amen? We belong to the body of Christ. We too, if we do not realize what we are actually involved in, what we need to shift away from, and what we need to be thankful for, then we too will suffer the same thing. So faith in God's purpose is actually realizing that we're not just here to actually argue with God and tell God how we feel. We, we are here to do what God tells us to do. Praise the Lord. So don't just go around with your hands hanging out as everything is happy. Tighten your belt. Okay? Have something in your hand. Be purposeful. Now, when we pray for blessings, when we pray for wealth, we don't just go home and sit and pray for it. You go out and work. Amen? When we pray for wealth, we, you know, when everybody uh, pray for blessings upon the people of God, uh, you know, for, uh, for the giving and everything, that prayer is not going to carry much for you if you don't go do anything about it. Amen? It's just going to remain on that altar. But if you went out there and tightened your belt and said, well, I've got to get out there and do something, earn some money, amen? Create some wealth for myself. Then God motivates us. Just like what Habakkuk needs to be doing today. Okay, we need to be motivated to stand up and do God's business in Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's our lesson for the coming week. Hallelujah, powerful. And uh, we need a billboard. Hallelujah. When they run, they read. Thank you, Jesus. We are that billboard. I bet it. And uh, thank God for the Apostle Paul's word. How beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings. Hallelujah. Of good news. Hallelujah. So consider yourself as having been uh, acknowledged and recognized that you have beautiful feet, so long as you're carrying the gospel of peace. That feet is beautiful, according to the Apostle Paul, according to the Word of God. So this morning we had great preachers, and this evening, uh, before we lay to bed, we'll be laying with the thoughts of what the, the Lord will bless us with the messages coming through them. And uh, one day, it will be your message, and uh, somebody else, let's uh, value and treasure them. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to start uh, from this end. Oh, better once he was quick to put it. Hallelujah. Her hands up. Hallelujah. Put our hands together for our dear elder, Peter Karana. Hallelujah. Which is good. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. My text for tonight is taken from the book of Revelations. Revelations chapter 8, verse 4. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angels' hands. My theme is when prayer shakes 
the earth. Praise the Lord. A single prayer, like a grain of, a grain of sand, can be a weighty thing. Scripture indicates prayer's powerful role in the coming of God's kingdom. In Revelation 8, John sees an angel standing at the altar before his throne holding a golden censer containing the prayers of all God's people. Then the angel took the censer, filled it up with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning and earthquakes. Immediately after the angel hurled the censer filled with the fire and prayers, seven angels with seven trumpets prepared to sound them in verse 8, heralding the old earth's last days and Christ's return. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery furnace. Not a single hair burned. Why? Because they won't bow down to the golden statue Nebuchadnezzar built except their own God. The lion's den, Daniel in the lion's den, the next day came out of it as normal. Why? Because he was praying to his God three times a day. See, three cyclones came our way and passed. Why? Because of the prayers of God's people. So the question is, how is your prayer life today? Saints, are we a Daniel who prays three times a day? Sometimes we may not feel like our prayers add up too much, but God doesn't miss one. He so values them that they somehow even play a role in his kingdom. What may seem like the smallest prayer to us can have earth-shaking weight with him. In conclusion, Hebrews 6, 17 and 18 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, like the children's songs we always teach them when they are little ones. Read your Bible, pray every day. Put on the whole armor of God that he may able to stand against the vials of the devil. When someone has wronged you, forgive that person 490 times and pray for that person. Your prayer will shake anyone to his or her sins. Step up and wake up. Shake the earth for Jesus is coming soon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The prayers. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Eddie and the bike. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need any MC. I just leave it at that. They just pop up like a popcorn. Amen. God bless you, sister. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise My text is found in John sixteen thirty three. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but of, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have told you these things so that it, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. My theme is take heart. Jesus reminds us that he knows the world we live in and, he giving, and, he's, giving us, and he's giving it to us straight. There is always going to be trouble. In fact, Jesus was telling his own disciples that he was about to face his own troubles, death on the cross. That's why he told them that he would not be alone during these times. He's got the Father whom is with him. In the same way, Jesus is telling us that only in him that we can find peace in the best of our troubles. And when he says take heart, he is cheering us on telling us to keep going, to live a life that shows everyone around you the source of your hope. Give, pray, and serve. Demonstrate Jesus' love in your community and beyond. He is saying, don't give up. Why? Because he, he has overcome the world. Victory. Jesus has already won. And we will see this fully in the end. So what is ours to do? Take, take heart and make your life, make Jesus' promise real to a troubled world. There's no escaping the fact that life is messy and full of trouble. This beautiful world is fractured. But despite this, Jesus offers us hope. Amen. Thank you. 
Next. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Another hand of a crap uh, for our dear sister. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Navit. Praise the Lord, saints. I praise God for this opportunity to be here and to share his word, and most importantly, Jesus' love. My text is 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. My theme is the love of God. Tonight, I want to share my journey and miracles in my life. 15 years ago in 2009, I left my home in Penryn, said my last goodbye to the people I love dearly, especially my mama and papa. Departed for school here in Narotonga by boat. Took us five days to arrive. That was a very long five days trip. I said to myself, I will never go, go back on the boat anymore. I was seasick the whole trip. As the years goes by, I started missing home. I lived, laughed, and loved the things of this world. My life was like those mountains Uncle Peter mentioned last week. Up, down, down, up a little bit. <laughs> In 2015, my papa passed away. So many regrets came into my mind how I wished to go back. A week later, after my papa's death, I decided to go back home to be with my mama. Cecilia, myself, plus Giselle, she was just one year old. Left for Penryn, back on the boat we go. The only possible way then. Due to engine failure, stopping in Aitutaki was our way off the Makimaki boat and back to Rarotonga we go. <laughs> for so many years, I tried getting back. One day, I, I, I kept telling myself that, every, that I will make it there back home. But let me share this. I am saved now, my family is saved in Jesus' name. I believed in him, I trust in him. I love the Lord with all my heart. <clears throat> the biggest of them all, I have faith in him and him alone. Faith that one day in due time, he will take me back home. Just a small a video to share my joy. 14 years later, when I came to know Jesus, this is one miracles he has done for me and to know the journey of the love of God. Thank you, Jess. Psalms 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Jesus loves me and you too. My theme says, the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was just starting to get up and dance to that song. Hallelujah. You can post it out. Such a nice song. Of course, hallelujah. At the reception of meeting. In love. Can we say amen? Put our hands together for our dear sister Lizzie. Ah, Bennett, glory. Praise the Lord, saints. My text found in the book of Matthew 22, verse 14. And it reads, For many are called, but few are chosen. In Maori, Tokorai oki te karanga ia, e itira te ikiki ia. In Samoa, I went a while to a tele watala ina, a to ititi ye wa fifilia. My theme says, accept the invitation. What is the difference between being called and chosen? How can we make sure that we are one of the chosen? Well, Jesus actually started off with a parable. He tells the story of a king 
whose son was getting married, he sent out many wedding invitations, but one Hallelujah. He sent out many invitations, but on the big day, not a single guest showed up. Amen. Jesus is using the word call as an invitation, an invitation to live a life together with Christ, serving God and experience the fulfillment, fu fulfillment that, been, that brings to life, an invitation to be Jesus' disciple, to follow in his footsteps. Amen. To be chosen is to accept the invitation and to do what is necessary to accept the invitation to give up everything in this world. That is, say yes to the calling and follow up with a faithful disciple's life. God calls us, but those who are chosen are those who whole hearts accept the invitation and its condition. Because not many want to pay the price. Jesus says in another place that the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. Therefore, few are choose this way. Amen. Jesus says, he who has ear to hear, let him hear. The point is, we all hear, we are all, we are all chosen, but we must each decide what to do with it. What we hear, amen. So God wants us to join him at this banquet, which will last for eternity. Revelation 17, 14 says, They shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. May God bless us all. Amen. Uh, better. Hallelujah. Well, our last speaker, put our hands together for our dear brother Deacon Tebaru. Good win. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. My text is taken from Romans 12, Romans 12, 21. Do not let evil defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with good. And my theme is, don't work part-time for the devil. So, I'd like to share this verse. It's a, it's a verse that's uh, helped me, and, reminds, and I have to remind myself all the time about this verse. Um, in KJ version, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Uh, basically, when someone fires an arrow at you, the word of God says don't fire back. When someone hurts you, don't pay, pay them back. Forgive them. We are born again children of God. We work for Jesus' company. If we attack anyone else in any way, then we are basically working part-time for the devil. We are doing the devil's business for him. So saints, I encourage us all not to apply for a part-time job from the devil. Don't ever allow evil to defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. I'm sure a lot of us got a lot of thoughts coming out of uh, these preachers tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, our short lesson for the night is the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Otavio de Basilea. Uh, based upon Matthew 16, 19. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt uh, loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Speaking to Peter. Hallelujah. Uh, the one who revealed and uh, answered back the right question. Who do uh, people say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Blessed art thou, Simon by John, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And to you I give the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. These are not keys of the church, but of the kingdom of heaven. The church is on earth. The heaven, the kingdom is in heaven. The church is the doorway. 
to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Which Jesus explained to his disciples when they came and asked him in Matthew chapter 13, 10, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus answered at verse 11, he said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. No other way. Hallelujah. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not. So this was the platform that Jesus laid in parables. Simple earthly stories with a heavenly kingdom concept and meaning. Hallelujah. Examples he explained uh, through parables. In that one chapter 13, uh, eight parables. The parable of the sower and the soils. Hallelujah. We will find that in your own time in Matthew, Mark, and uh, Luke. Hallelujah. We know how he distinguished the rocky and the bushy and the dry and the good soil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Very mysterious. But if we have the Spirit of God, if we have the Holy Ghost, we'll be able to see and understand the moral of the story in a very uh, uh, explicable way. Hallelujah. And secondly, the parable of the tears, how both look pretty much the same. Hallelujah. But uh, a big contrast. Tears is a tita. Hallelujah. Wheat is the real stuff. Hallelujah. But they grow together. Lord, shall we just uh, take the tears out? He said, leave it, let it grow together. Hallelujah. Until the harvest time. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, we are given the, uh, the discernment, the spirit of the Holy Ghost to see uh, the tears and the wheat. Hallelujah. Uh, people do not see, cannot identify, cannot tell which one is which without the Holy Ghost. So there's a lot of deceptions in the world and we need the Holy Ghost to give us that spirit of uh, discernment. Thirdly, the parable of the mustard seed, the tiniest of all seeds, yet it grows into the biggest tree. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Such is the kingdom of God from a tiny, like this uh, tiny, uh, little, unknown, insignificant uh, Samoan teenagers going back to their country, ordained elders and to pastor and to evangelize. Hallelujah. A big, thank you, Jesus, a mustard tree, the parable of the leaven in the dough of flour. You don't see it, but you see the flour pop up. Hallelujah. That's the leaven. You don't see how it works, but the effect of it shows. Look at the wind. You hear where it's coming, uh, the, the sound of it, but you do not know where it's coming and where it's going. Such is the people that are in the spirit of Almighty God and born again. They are unpredictable. Hallelujah. We don't know where we're going to end because we are led by the Spirit of God and we have ears that is attuned to the voice of God. Hallelujah. The parable of the hidden treasure. Hallelujah. This uh, person bought uh, the whole piece of land, not because he wanted the land, but there was a portion where the treasure is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, it turned out that the uh, treasure in it is not uh, uh, the nodules in our ocean, it's not the, the gold and uh, uh, Hallelujah. The oil and the iron ore, the minerals, whatever, in the whole world, it's the church. Hallelujah. That's the real treasure of God. The church for the salvation of mankind. Hallelujah. We can be affluent. We can be rich and wealthy with whatever natural resources that Lord has blessed that country, this country, and all over. But none will save that country and nation and people. But the church. Hallelujah. That's the parable Jesus was giving. The parable of the great, uh, the parable of the, uh, hallelujah, 
Uh, the great prize, thank you, Jesus. Uh, the fishing net, you throw the net and you catch all kinds of color, color fish. The big one, the thorny one, the slippery one, all kinds are coming into the church. Hallelujah. But God will uh, filter, He will sift, hallelujah, which ones are the, the real ones. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but he, 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 he welcomes all. Thank you, Jesus. The parable of the householder, the owner of the house. All eight in one chapter. The parable pointing to the kingdom of God. He was uh, uh, leading them like little kids, uh, one step at a time. Hallelujah. Not jump from the bottom right up to the top. He'll take a step at a time, one day at a time. Hallelujah. That's what these parables are. Thank you, Jesus. So all of these above-mentioned parables are in the, the spheres of our Christian profession. Hallelujah. This is one way we can witness to people. It is like this, the way Jesus taught. We can have our own personal testimony. This can also be basic and fundamental. Hallelujah. Lead into the kingdom of God. All this. A key is a badge of power or authority as stated in Isaiah. Hallelujah. And in Revelation, you have time to read through that. That holds the key. Hallelujah. Who holds the keys of hell and death in Revelation 1.18? None other but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Uh, the, the apostolic history explains and uh, limits this trust. Hallelujah. For it was Peter, thank you Jesus, who took the keys of the kingdom of heaven to open the first door of Christian opportunity and privilege to Israel on the day of Pentecost. It was to Israel. Hallelujah. Ye children of Israel, hear ye Israel. Hallelujah. As uh, uh, Andrew alluded to uh, today. Thank you Jesus. So he took the keys and opened the door to the kingdom of God for the Jews on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Goes on to say, This is the promise unto you, to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call, whoever they may be, wherever, however far, then they that gladly received this word were baptized. The same day there were added unto them 3,000 souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Hallelujah. Everything else dissipates. Everything else disappears. It's apostles' doctrine. The truth has arrived. Hallelujah. Jesus has arrived. The real thing has arrived. The kingdom of God was at hand. Now the kingdom of God is in you. Jesus in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They continue steadfastly. That's the doctrine of salvation today. And waste no time dwelling on a whole lot of other stuff. Is Jesus the way, the truth, and the life? No man gets to the Father but by him. The apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And it was also the apostle Peter who took the same keys to open the door to the kingdom of heaven to the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius in Acts 10, 34 to 48. There he uh, spoke to them and the Holy Ghost uh, fell upon them. They all spoke in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. They weren't baptized. Hallelujah. The readiness of their heart, the willingness of their heart, the desire of their heart erupted into speaking in tongues without having gone through the water baptism. Hallelujah. So many people are waiting uh, for baptism and then wait whether they will ever uh, speak in tongues. It can come on you anytime. Hallelujah. When our hearts is all uh, ready and willing. Hallelujah. To heed to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. So, there was no assumption by Peter of any other authority. Hallelujah. There and then, he opened the door, the keys to the Jews and to the Gentiles. That's us. 
and all generations that shall come forth. When Paul came, he was the apostle to the Gentiles to continue what Peter had started. Peter just opened the door, turned the key, and swung open the door. God, Jesus, had already spoken to, to, to Saul uh, and changed his name to Paul. Hallelujah. It is I, Jesus, that you are persecuting. It is hard for a man to kick against the prick. Hallelujah. Go into Damascus and wait there. Someone will come. And uh, speak to you, hallelujah, and he will commission you. So at verse 18 of chapter 9, he was baptized, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. And uh, he was added to the band of uh, apostles of Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? amen. So Peter kind of uh, uh, faded back, didn't fall out of the ministry, hallelujah, he continued. In uh, another role, in another, uh, uh, thank you, Jesus, office. Thank you, Jesus. So it was the Apostle James, not Peter, at the Council of Jerusalem. James became the first bishop of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. He conducted the council. Peter was just sitting there. Seems to have uh, presided, if we read Acts. Hallelujah. 15, 19, uh, they will uh, uh, understand what happened there. Compare also Galatians 2, 11, 14. So Peter claimed no more for himself than to be an apostle by gift. Hallelujah. As a gift, 1 Peter 1 uh, at verse 1. He said, uh, you elders like me an elder. That's how he addressed them. And an elder by office, First Peter 5, 1. So he, he stepped down, hallelujah, to give way uh, for others to move on. Thank you, Jesus, in Matthew 18, 18, by the apostles and other believers in John 20, 22 and 23. Thank you, Jesus. And in Luke 24, 33. He said, uh, their sins he shall uh, remit and their sins he shall retain. Hallelujah. The apostolic uh, authority has been imparted upon those baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. You can uh, pardon whoever uh, in the apostolic spirit. Their sins he shall uh, forgive, he shall remit, and their sins he shall retain. Katapu katuku. Hallelujah. So don't, don't doubt the Holy Ghost anointing there is upon you. As uh, many speakers earlier on has uh, said to us, uh, uh, you are the voice, we are the, uh, hallelujah, the body of Christ in our community, in our places of work. You carry the authority if it's required, if it's needed, Hallelujah. That's why your bishop always encourages all. Don't forget to take your anointing oil. Hallelujah. God will throw a miracle right before your eyes. God will throw a blessing right before your eyes. God will throw, hallelujah, something to show these people the power of Almighty God. Uh, through you, through me, through us all. We're going to be prepared all the time. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, an illustration of Peter's use of his authority as related to forgiveness in John 23, where he said, what I've just said, is also given in Acts 10, 43. Hallelujah. These are scriptures for in-depth uh, study uh, to this lesson. See, also the Apostle Paul used it in Acts 13. Hallelujah. 13 to 39. The keys of death and hell, the place of departed spirits are held by the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Hallelujah. Peter had the key to the kingdom, to the Jews, then to the Gentiles and the rest of the world. But the keys of hell and death was in the hands of Jesus. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. That's his prerogative. I don't know what that key is for. He only knows. Hallelujah. Have you taken that step of salvation to the kingdom of heaven that the early church took on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2? 
Obedience is better than sacrifice. Be saved, stay saved. The day of rapture is at our very doorstep. Can we say amen? amen. Let's give Jesus a hand. Praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So, I am key. You are key to souls that are lost out there. Use it. Hallelujah. Let me invite our closing prayer, our leader for tonight. Uh, shall we stand to our feet? We have a little, uh, uh, little chit chat after this prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Peter. Let us pray. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we have come to the end of our service tonight, full of your spiritual blessings. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word to nourish our souls. As we make our own ways back home, Lord, lead and guide us from the place, from this place, but never from your presence. Bless us with a good night's sleep tonight and wake up us, wake us up to a new day tomorrow with you always on our mind. In Jesus' name we pray, all of God's people sing. Amen, amen. Lord, bless those on live stream, hallelujah, watching. We appreciate them being with us, joining us in this time of worship. Bless us all as we go through a short meeting, hallelujah, and be dismissed home. In your wonderful name, Jesus, we sing. Yes, yes and amen Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah.